All right, for those of you who are new to owning your own tree business and you're still trying to figure out how to quote jobs, this video is going to walk through some important things that you need to take into consideration when quoting. And this doesn't necessarily just apply to tree removal, but tree trimming, etc. So, let's say we're going to take down these two trees right here. Pretty decent size. Nice open area to work, but you do have the shed there. You got stuff leaning over the shed. You got hemlocks here. So that means probably a mix of maybe some free fall, some rigging, depending on how low of impact you want to be. Your access, primary access point would be right here. Probably not going to get a bucket through here, but you could maybe get a lift um depending on the size and as far as material you could either drag it out or get a mini load or a bobcat back here or if you really wanted to you could back a chipper or dump trailer in as far as you could depending on how tall your truck is you have to consider the gutter here and these hemlocks so i mean overall pretty reasonable work area but before bringing any heavy equipment back here, you need to find out where is a septic system. Make sure that you're not driving over that with anything that's too heavy or dropping logs that might do some damage. Obstacles, rigging, climbing, cleanup, how far you gotta drag the brush what's involved in the cleanup, what's involved in the removal. These are all different things that you have to consider. The more obstacles, the more rigging, the longer you gotta drag the brush, the higher your price should be. Don't shortchange yourself on that. When I first started my business, I made the mistake of quoting too low and also quoting on the spot, not giving it much thought. You know, it's not uncommon when you're newer in business to you know, do whatever you can to try to win as many jobs. But I've since changed my mindset and look at, it's not trying to win every job that matters. It's winning the clients that are willing to pay for the quality service and professionalism that you're providing, right? So you need to be okay with losing some jobs. The people who don't wanna pay for a professional, you know, who are looking for a $100 tree removal, you gotta be okay with losing those jobs. And instead, focus on the clients who are actually invested in hiring a real professional. So what I do now, even on small jobs, is I look at the job. I look at everything you know that I talked about earlier in the video, take pictures, and then I give myself X amount of time to think about it. So maybe 24 hours for bigger jobs, maybe 36 to 48, and I write it up and then I really think about it, look at the pictures, not all at once, you know, I might write the estimate up, come up with a number that I think is reasonable, look at some pictures and then take a break for a couple hours. Then revisit it, look at it again and repeat that process for however many times I see fit until I feel 100% confident and satisfied with my number, what I'm bidding. Because, you know, especially when you get into bigger projects, it's a real gut punch, you know, to underbid and realize you're not really making any money. Every job is different. Every situation is different. If this all seems overwhelming, one thing you can do is write up a checklist of things that you're going to look for when you go look at a job. And then, you know, bring a clipboard with your checklist, check them off, you know, as you go. So we're going to look at what obstacles are there, what's the access like. Is there a septic system or anything else I have to be mindful of? Don't forget sprinkler systems. Um, if you're getting involved with stump grinding, underground lines, power lines, water lines, a lot of factors to consider and you wanna make sure you don't miss anything. So if you find it helpful, write a checklist and give yourself anywhere between 24 to 48 hours or however long you feel you need to, to really get to a number that you're happy with. You know, sometimes it's kind of obvious on some of the smaller jobs, but even then, I prefer to give myself time 
to really think about it. And on the bigger projects, I take even more time. Um, you don't want to shortchange yourself. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I love to hear your thoughts and I want to hear from you guys. I want to make sure that I'm putting out the content that you guys want to see, what's going to help you. So, please comment down below. Let me know what videos you want to see related to fitness, lifestyle, tree work, and we'll see you all next time.